Hey guys, Bobo from Bobo Outdoors. Today we're out driving around checking out some covered bridges in New Hampshire. Uh, right now, the first one is number 20 on the New Hampshire's list of covered bridges. I think there's 51 uh, that they list. Uh, this is the uh, Cornish Windsor Bridge. Um, <laughs> Now it's kind of cool. This, uh, I mean, this tells about the uh, original bridges and stuff. The yeah, the original ones that were here. But uh, this is the longest wooden bridge in the United States, and it's the longest two-span covered bridge in the world. Um, and this James Tasker um, that helped build this one also built like 11 other ones around this area in New Hampshire and Vermont, which is pretty crazy considering it was, uh, you know, well, it gives his uh, date of birth and death from uh, 1826 to 1903, so uh, to build 11 of these bridges. So anyways, we'll try and get a shot of the span of the bridge. In, uh, pretty, pretty long span, 460 feet, it's pretty amazing. Well, let's see if we can uh, take a walk through it without getting killed to death. We'll meet up with you over the bridge, at the bridge near the bridge somewhere around the entrance okay here we are at the entrance walk your horses or pay two dollars fine 1866-1966 uh, covered bridge number 20 so anyway someone's uh, coming to turn down here but uh, let them buy and start continue on the way through. Oh. You got plastic in the windows now. Let's go to Jeez, guy. Might maybe want to go back to Connecticut. Hmm. My new boots, I sound like a horse. Got some new pieces here and there, new structure. I know a lot of the ones in Swansea, they have to uh, close down and repair the, the uh, entrance, exit. People drive their trailers through or box truck or something and uh, tear boards out of them. I think the one closest to my house is a lot of campers come from the campground and get down the hill and uh, realize they really don't know how to back up that big camper there. So they think they can make it through the bridge and uh, and don't it's interesting that's a locked locked door makes you wonder what that's what that uh, is all about one more coming another one coming Thanks for all the room. <laughs> I 
wonder if kids were climbing out the windows and jumping into the river. There's some... It almost looked like loons down there. You guys probably all, probably all you can see is this uh, window here. Some kind of ducks diving under. Apparently, people crossing this bridge aren't friendly to people walking. <laughs> Couldn't even. I just couldn't even imagine uh, starting where to start on building a structure like this with the uh, with today's tools, let alone uh, in the 1800s. But anyways. River down there, the other side of the bridge. I don't want to show off anybody's houses for them. Just respect their privacy of their yard. <laughs> oh, what a nice breeze! It really freezes the uh, freezes the nostrils together. All right, well, we're gonna walk back through this bridge. I don't know, wanna bore you guys with the walk back through. Ron, uh, Honorable Ronald J. Harris, Robert J. Harris, in recognition of his dedication to the people and the history of communities this bridge connects. Ronald State Representatives, 1976 1997, as a town moderator, wins the selectman. Nice. It's nice to see different plaques, you know, honoring people that have done so much for towns and whatnot. But, all right, we're going to book it back through this bridge so we don't die to death and and uh, freeze to death because we're wimps. So it's not really that cold out. It's just under 40. But, yeah. We'll catch you uh, on the next bridge. Hey guys, it's Bobo here. We're back. This is Ding Dingleton Hill Bridge. This is number 22. This was also built by James Tasker. It was built in 1882. Um, he said the original cost was $812 of this bridge. It's crazy. I was just looking at the stonework underneath. Um, I guess said this when it was built was originally just one of these was just used for one family I don't remember if it was this one I guess it was the other one it was used for one family let show this is bridge number 22 should be looking right at the sign but I can't see it <laughs> jeez uh Not nearly as long as the other one. Everyone's favorite pastime, doing burnouts on the covered bridge because your car doesn't have enough power to do a burnout on asphalt. I was there one day. A long, long time ago. Since... Definitely not as uh, fancy as the first one we were on, but of course, that one had a lot longer span. Uh, the stonework under here is, it's got some 
some concrete repairs done, but it's pretty impressive from the other side. You know, the, the first side of the bridge looking back over it. But All right. There should be one just a little further up the road, I think, was a uh, blacksmith shop bridge. I think will be the next one we get to. So we'll see you there. Hey, folks. We're back at the Meriden Covered Bridge. This is another one built by James Tasker. Uh, it was built in 1880. Uh, $685 was the original cost for this. Uh, it was restored in 1963. I'm looking at the little board right there. Uh, so this has been a popular swimming hole for Meriden residents. It's like a place for birds too. But just gonna walk down here a little bit. Looks like a lot of people do. Hopefully I don't wake anybody up from a slumber. No. Looks like a lot of people come down here though. Yeah, you can definitely uh, see the new construction with the steel and whatnot. Um, concrete. Oh. <laughs> oh, I see. There's a big, uh, there's a big pool over there, down there. That um, must be the swimming hole. There's a rope there and stuff. But, uh, it's like 40 degrees, so I got no interest in swimming, but I'm not gonna swing off a rope uh, into the water. Anyways, I don't think that'd be good for for me. Uh, it's quite a trek down there, but I think it was worth it. Uh. Let's check out the bridge. <clears throat> Excuse me. The floor looks like it's been uh, replaced a lot sooner than uh, 1963, I'd say. But well, it's Kimball's Mill. Huh. History mill that was built here. Washed out the dam in 55. Huh. Alright, well we'll check in with you at the next stop. See if we can find another bridge local. Hey folks, we're back already. We are at Covered Bridge. Number 21. This is Blacksmith Shop Bridge. This is the one that was built for one family. Um, it was also built by James Tasker. 
Uh, $873 was the original cost of this bridge. This one and the one we were just at, they did a restoration in what year? Do you remember? 1963, they did a restoration at a cost of 30000 for the two of them. Um, so this one was $873 originally uh, to build in 1881. Which I think the last one we were at was uh, 1882. So to think that you know he built these things in this in that time frame, uh, it's just with those tools in a year's time is is unreal. Pass at your own risk. Close to wheeled vehicles, okay. So we're not trespassing. There's an old foundation down there. I don't know. They said the blacksmith shop was nearby, and that's where it's got its name from, was, was uh, the nearby blacksmith shop. But this one was really similar construction to the last one, but... Of course, being not as much of a spin and uh, only one vehicle at a time, I guess it doesn't have to be as strong. Oh, wow, you can see the some big stone walls up further. Well, I don't know if the home site was. Or, you know, we'll venture up a little further here. It looks like it might be worth a trip. I don't know if there would be another bridge down there or some sort of building. Where all that stonework is through the trees. Oh, well. Walk up a little further. I just happen to think that. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a house site here. I just happen to think that it's still hunting season. Hmm. We're not wearing any uh, anything orange. It's a nice old home site or shop site or something. The stonework up here, though, is amazing. <laughs> Excuse me. I just, you know, these... The amount of work these folks did... the rocks to build foundations and walls is, is uh, crazy. This is definitely a spot that um, huh. looks like deer stool. But yeah, this is, uh, just blows me away. Huh, someone's got a little shelter down there. <laughs> Look down at the bridge through the woods. 
pretty nice. I don't want to go any deeper up in here. Just in case someone's hunting from the other way. Be great if I pushed a big old buck into them for them, but wouldn't be great if I ruined their hunt or get shot at. So, yeah, someone's got some kind of a little shelter going down here. Looks like it hasn't been used in a while. But, uh, this seems like a good spot to come back to to uh, explore further up. I bet there's some house sites and whatnot up further. So, all right, but well, we're gonna move on to the next covered bridge, I believe. Check back with you then. Alright guys, we are back. We are at Blow Me Down Bridge. Another one built by James Tasker. Um, let's see, this one was built in 1877. The original cost of $528. Um, oh, right here. Built 1877, cost 529, it says there. Rebuilt 1980, plus 2002, cost question. That's, uh, oh, this one's interesting. Relics of the bridge. I've never, never been in a, uh, a bridge that had a little uh, a museum, so to speak, on it. This is pretty cool. I really like they did it, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't think there'd be anything in here to uh, invite guests by all the you no know, trespassing and um, you know, no place to park anywhere around it once you drive off into the ditch, which we kind of did. I don't want to upset anybody, but, uh, <laughs> signs that say, uh, trespassers will be shot and survivors will be shot again. So, this is the deep gorge of Blow Me Down Brook. Wow, that's... I bet there's some trout right down in that little pool. There's a bank in there, all that ledge. Ledge all the way down. That little pool looks deep and blue right there. Oh. So blow me down brook. Blow me down bridge. It does go down into quite a gorge. It's huh, pretty amazing. Oh. Amazing the joinery they use to you know, figure out these loads and secure things and oh. oh okay, covered bridge number twenty three. Six foot nine, I barely made it through without hitting my head. All right, guys. Well, that was Blow Me Down Bridge. We'll catch up with you at the next one.
Oh, excuse me. Hey, folks, we've stopped at the Blow Me Down Mill. Uh, looked really interesting. It's right here on a dam. Uh, 1891. Oh, there he is. Hey, brother. What's going on? Oh, what a fantastic day. Landed up there in a tree. Can't whistle today. But anyways, I have a thing for birds of prey. Um, my dad and I were coming out of the woods the other day and saw this really nice owl just uh, flew down kind of a ways in front of us and landed in a tree, let us get fairly close, get a look at it. Really beautiful owl, had to be a good foot tall. Seen eagles this year, so many hawks. Uh, This, uh, must have, there's a plaque over there we'll look at, but I just kind of wanted to walk over here. But it looked like there was another section of the building here that went down. Uh, it's too bad. Would have been nice on the wall if it wasn't destroyed. Bees nest. Uh, something got it. Or the wind, or what's the other part of the dam? I don't know if originally, we'll find out on that board. Maybe originally this was a hydro powered mill. Uh. Come around. So I'm gonna try getting in down there. I think it's black plastic over the windows, so you can't see anything inside. Not overly deep, a couple feet. Anyways, let's take a look. Yeah, there was another uh, thing here. Uh, uh, ground grain for the community. Generated electricity for the Blow Me Down Farm. Built in 1891 by Charles Beeman. Friend of sculptor Augustus St. Gaudens. This home was just up the road. Yeah, we saw the... Uh, uh, St. Gaudens place just up the road here. We might take a ride up there. Uh, well, that's crazy. 1897 uh, pounds. 228,894 pounds of corn. 98,010 pounds of bran. 60,500 of middlings, 16,500 of mixed feed, 700 of toll. Grain for the mill and lower payment. Commonly used in the, uh, what does blow me down mean? Huh, surprise, surprise. It's kind of neat. I guess it shows an overview of the front of the Place. So apparently there's a this weir here, so just down here there's a stone arch bridge too, but there's hiking trails and lots of different stuff around here. Not really sure if there's any fish in this little dam, but I just happened to bring a couple rods with me, so I think I'll uh, toss one out there and I just have like a black spinner on there. I got a top water. 
thing too. It's kind of overcast today. Maybe I'll try that. And, uh, I don't think I'll strap on the chest cam or nothing, but um, I'll turn the camera back on if uh, if I catch something. Thanks, guys. Hey, folks, we're at the Corbin Covered Bridge in Newport, New Hampshire. This one, they're not sure. They don't know who built it. And they assume they age it approximately 1845. Um, not a lot of information on this one as to who built it and exactly when. Um, but nice looking bridge, nice stonework. Um, another car coming, we'll let them go through. Go back and try to figure out in that field over there. It's a bunch of yellow cones. Yeah. Figure that out. Guy's in a hurry. Ow! Bent my fingernail back. Yeah. Pretty crazy. It's all dull together here not a lot for bolts I don't know what you can see for because it's dark but those look square on that side huh they are I uh, wonder if they're replacement pegs, but square on the, on the end. What a tremendous amount of work that goes into this. Let's see. Oh, let's see. It says it was erected in 1843. Replicated 1994 by Master Bridge Wright, Arnold Grattan and Associates, Ashland, New Hampshire. So they have a date of 1863. So other side of it. Pretty neat that. A little granite drainage ditch down here. Very neat. Be nice to take a trip back in time, see what this all looked like when that bridge was built. I don't think I'd want to live back then, but I could go back and record it, <laughs> bring it to you guys. Well, I'm going to check out what this field is. This is something about dog owners, so maybe it's where they, where there's dog poo. Or maybe it's a training ground for dogs. Unlawful for dogs to excrete on property other than its owners. So the owner can excrete on the property or the well, the dog can excrete on the owner's property. The owner can't excrete on somebody's property. But, all right, I got it. Airport runway, authorized personnel only. Huh. Well, that's kind of neat. Oh, that's kind of cool. 
So it's actually a airport runway in the park. So neat. Well, I guess that answers that. That's a runway. That's what all those orange cones or yellow cones are. It is not dog doo doo. There's a nice park over here, a nice shot of the bridge. I'm gonna get, get down here, save on uh, time a little, and get some better shots of the bridge and the water. Ah, it's a really nice spot to come down to and have a picnic. I don't know what's in this river for fish, but we'll drown a worm in there. Need a little thing. It's crazy how they could stack that. Stack that granite like that. No mortar. from the side around this tree. So it burned down and was rebuilt in 93, I think that sign just said. But nice little spot with these two rivers meet. Park bench over there. And if the air, you know, the Airplanes were landing. It'd be kind of fun to be down here and hanging out, and watching the plane lands, drowning worms, and having a good old time. I guess there's a couple more that are close by. We're gonna try and locate before it gets much darker, more colder. Eh, it goes all the way to the other side. Would you look at that? All right, well, we'll see you at the next one. Welcome back, folks. We are at Wright Covered Railroad Bridge. It was uh, 1906. Um, some really cool shots of it train going through it, the trains that ran it. Uh, this is on the rail trail. Uh, in uh, Claremont, Newport. New Newport. Um, oh, look, there's a little rock up here alright nature uh, so this one's a railroad bridge let's head up to it the wind has made it a little brisk uh, my uh I changed rear view mirror so my thermometer works in my truck now. So that said it was 40 degrees, but a little bit of wind makes it a little chilly. I like these burls on these trees. That's what they call them, burls. Seen some pretty big ones and adventures. Oh, there's some big ones down in there on a tree. There's a cherry tree way down there and there it is. So the right railroad bridge. These are a lot different. Wow, they're really tall. Obviously they'd have to be for the trains. You know, they didn't 
covered bridges weren't built for tractor trailers so the ones on the roads they're not as tall it's quite a bridge when you look down at them they said it was built by the engineering company for B&M Railroad. Uh, now it's uh, used as like bike pass and uh, snowmobiles in the if we ever get enough snow and I'll take a little walk through they all now after a few fires this is something a little different <laughs> you don't see on the uh, ones for cars you don't see it open like this on the sides like like this is uh, but they added these sprinkler systems. There's a few, few burned down. There was one, uh, one of the ones we were just in burned down and rebuilt in I think '93. And there's one in Swansea that was, or uh, Westport that was destroyed by arson, I believe. So I assume that the uh, that a lot of this structure was added and it was just tracks that ran across the top of the the top you know all this wood must have been added I would say I may be wrong but a tall bridge surprised that there's not a some of the uh, rail beds I've walked and come across bridges that they still have a big steel uh, post like with with uh, ticklers coming down that scratch the top of the train to let them know that they're going to hit the bridge if <laughs> if they keep going but Anyways, that's Wright's Railway Bridge. I'm going to book it back to the truck because I'm cold. Well, uh, I think there's one right down the road. We're going to stop at that and show you guys that one. Thank you. All right, folks, we're here at the Pier or Chandler Station Covered Railroad Bridge. This one was built in 1907. Uh, again, there's a picture of it in use uh, Boston and Maine railroad locomotive 19 uh, 1495 built by the Manchester locomotive works in 1910 popularly called the uh, mogul class of the locomotives I can't it's just getting the right light I can't see well this is the type of motive power used on the Claremont branch anyways looks a lot like the uh, last one we were at but you can see where this one's called the pier bridge it's got piers under it some kind of crazy alarm going off in the firebox for the for the bridge i see they're rushing right over to make sure the bridge isn't burning down there's this side And 
Much the same as the other one, except the graffiti artists are too lazy to walk down all the way to the tracks to the other one, I guess. Imagine a hundred years ago walking through here about halfway and you're stepping over all the You know, because it wasn't wooded like this, so you're stepping all over all the open spots there, and all of a sudden you hear the train coming. I think this one wouldn't be bad to get through, but still make you a little nervous. Uh, pretty neat that they would make a covered railroad bridge. Uh, guy likes sushi or slushies or sushi or can't spell. Pier, Pier or Chandler Railroad Bridge. And uh, that's probably it for today on bridges. I'm going to do some more. I've got several close to where I live, so do that. But that's it for today. Thanks everyone for checking us out. Please like, subscribe, share, thumbs up, all that kind of good stuff. And uh, we'll call this one part one. And we'll see you next time on part two. Respect it. <laughs>